Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers, GA's next big date approaches, Mosaic. Ticket sales now open for Affordable Flying Expo. Pulitzer Trophy revived to test electric aircraft innovation. And I'm your host, Colin Lee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. GA's next big date approaches, Mosaic. The GA community is eagerly anticipating the date that marks the beginning of a new era for many pilots, October 22, 2025. That's when the long-awaited Modernization of Special Airworthiness Certification, or MOSAIC, final rule takes effect, and it will have a profound influence on many aspects of GA, but perhaps most especially sport pilots. For sport pilots, which number over 7,000 holding the certificate, they will now be able to fly a new set of different aircraft makes and models. No longer limited to the light sport aircraft as defined in the old rule, they will now be able to access most of the current general aviation training aircraft available at most local airports. The rule eliminates the weight limit that restricted sport pilots to a max takeoff weight of 1,320 pounds. Instead of a weight restriction, sport pilots will now be able to fly any aircraft with a clean stall speed of 59 knots or less, and also the two-seat limit has gone up to four, albeit still with just one passenger. The list of such aircraft is not short. It includes the Cessna 150, 152, 172, and many 182s, many Piper Cherokees and Archers, and many legacy vintage aircraft like Luscombs and older Bonanzas. After the break, Bristel receives first FAA Part 23 certification for its B-23 trainer. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Bristol receives first FAA Part 23 certification for its B-23 trainer. Bristol was awarded its first FAA-type certification for the B-23 two-seater, assisting its efforts to get on the U.S. flight training map. The bird has more than 1,100 delivered to customers since 2009. Nearly 100 B-23s are already flying in the USA. With FAA approval under its belt, the B-23 offers American flight schools a modern alternative to legacy trainers that have dominated fleets for decades. Additional B-23 variants, including Rotax 912IS, 915IS, and 916IS-powered versions, as well as IFR-capable configurations, are planned to follow. Sonex High Wing Webinar. Tune in October 8th. If you're interested in the Sonex High Wing, you might want to tune in to a webinar on October 8th. This webinar will give a brief overview of the Sonex High Wing and its development, and will detail the progress made since AirVenture 2025. With first flight on June 30th, Sonex had an extremely successful showing of the new aircraft at AirVenture and have been hard at work continuing the development, testing, and refinement of the aircraft since the show, along with planning for kit production. Learn more at sonexaircraft.com. UAvionics reveals major upgrade to its AV30C class gauges. Avionics provider UAvionics recently debuted a major software update to its AV30C multifunction panel display, designed as a drop-in digital replacement for legacy instruments. By popular demand, the instrument will now feature wind speed and direction capabilities, enhanced angle of attack indications, RL altitude alerts, and many other safety and usability improvements. 
FAA approval for version 3.1.1 is already in place, and the software is available now at no charge. Silverlight Aviation updates engineering consultancy for Mosaic. Silverlight Aviation is expanding their aviation engineering consultancy practice to include Mosaic compliance. This comes after years of an engineering consultancy resulting in streamlined operations, quality assurance processes, ASTM compliance, and FAA airworthiness certification for a variety of aviation companies manufacturing light aircraft. Abed Farouki, president and founder of Silverlight Aviation, said, quote, Mosaic brings exciting changes to pilots and manufacturers. From factory-built gyroplanes to faster two- and four-seat planes to twin engines, everyone stands to benefit from reduced cost of compliance and greater capability. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Ticket sales now open for Affordable Flying Expo. With a little over a month to go, it's time to get serious. Thanks to the folks at Sun & Fun, we have a highly professional online ticketing apparatus at our disposal for next month's Affordable Flying Expo. And some other good news, you can use the code AFE2025 to get $5 off the adult ticket price of $15, or even more for a three-day pass. After an insane amount of work on the part of the ANN crew, and more than a little hand-holding by the event experts at Sun & Fun, the Expo is shaping up. We have an amazing series of seminars and forums in the works, as well as a live Friday night town hall in which we will be dissecting Mosaic in as great a detail as we can muster. Also, attendees receive free admission to the Florida Air Museum during the expo. We're planning on lots of demo flying, some intriguing flight displays of the latest affordable flyers, food trucks to take care of your munchies, and best of all, we've already landed some of the sport aviation industry's most prominent companies. On deck are Vans, Cubcrafters, Gratia Aero and the BD-4C, Dynan Avionics, Delta Hawk, Extra Aircraft, Phil Lockwood and his RV-916, Glime, King Schools, Hummel Aircraft, and so much more. Get your tickets now and tell all your friends to do the same. Any profit made from the event will go to the Sun & Fun ACE program. Check out affordableflying.net slash attend and click purchase tickets. We'll see you in Lakeland November 6th, 7th, and 8th. After these messages, Pulitzer Trophy revived to test electric aircraft innovation. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com DirectFly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single-engine, two-seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple, all-metal aircraft design provides low-maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Welcome back. Pulitzer Trophy revived to test electric aircraft innovation. On October 12th, the NAA will be bringing electric aircraft to Springfield, Ohio to compete for a title that hasn't officially been given in more than a century, the Pulitzer Trophy. As of now, the lineup includes one Beta Alia CX-300 and two Pipistrel Velis Electros. Not affordable per se, but the tech has potential for us all. According to race director Scott Newman, a former U.S. Air Force test pilot and volunteer with the NAA, the goal is to bring the public closer to electric aircraft while the technology is still on the up and up. The competition is being held alongside the National Advanced Air Mobility Industry Forum, scheduled in Springfield two days later. Partners include the Advanced Air Mobility Institute, a Boston nonprofit, and the National AAM Center of Excellence. The course will replicate the historic format, a 60 nautical mile triangular circuit flown in staggered heats, with cumulative flight times determining the winners. Instead of the original Sterling Silver Trophy, which is now displayed at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, pilots will receive gold, silver, and bronze medallions modeled after awards from the 1920s. 
And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.